So this summer, Veroni Kenshin received a new anime adaptation, and this is weird for a few reasons. The main one you can check out in the description, we did a whole video on it, the link is there. But besides that elephant in the room, Veroni Kenshin is almost a 30 year old manga and its original anime adaptation isn't much younger. And it's not like we haven't seen this kind of thing before, Dodo Hetero was about 20 years old before the anime released, but in that case I think it was more about giving that manga a better shot because it was so damn good. In Kenshin's case however, it's not like the manga went low key. It's one of the most beloved franchises that came out of the 90s, there were multiple video games a 95 episode anime, live action movies, an audio drama, OVAs, Kenshin was a big deal. And with all that said, an anime remake isn't unheard of. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood was a huge success and designed to follow the manga faithfully, and recently we covered the new Trigun remake. With Trigun though, the original anime was pretty far from the manga, and compared to a lot of other series we've covered on the channel, Trigun's manga wasn't the most popular. If you're interested, you can check out that video, we'll put that in the description as well. But the Kenshin remake raises a lot of questions. The Hokkaido arc, which started in 2017, is ongoing, but this isn't an anime adaptation for that. This is the original again. And it's not like the original hasn't already had a remake. It was a manga remake in the early 2010s, but still, Rurouni Kenshin Restoration exists. But more than any of this strangeness, the new anime leaves one burning question. Is it different? What are they doing with it? Is this still Rurouni Kenshin? Let's find out. Yo, Sensei Mike here, and if you're watching this video, you probably like to learn things. Pretty fair assessment, right? Well, thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare, you can learn all the things. For real though, Skillshare is the perfect place for somebody with a creative mind to explore and uncover new things that interest them. Whether you're looking for digital design, analog art, or something more business-minded, Skillshare's got what you're looking for. Personally, Bonsai Pop has had a mascot, Papu, right here for like two years now, but no one knows she exists because we never have a good reason to use her in our videos and our logo is too popular to change. However, I'm starting to get into some character animation classes so I can learn how to make looping animations and hopefully sooner rather than later, we can actually have her appearing regularly in videos. That'd be cool. Maybe she'll even do those sponsor slots in the future, you never know. The point is, Skillshare has so much to offer, and if you're fast, you can start for free. The first 1,000 people to use my link in the description are going to get a one month free trial, so don't wait, get that free trial while it lasts, and start learning something new. Now let's get to the video. So before we truly begin, I want to address the fact that I know you're all waiting for the insane story of Ravoni Kenshin. It is coming. The script for that video has reached 40 pages. To give you guys an idea of how long that's going to make the video, our average 40 minute video is about 12 pages. This video is 5 pages. So yeah, uh, it's a big boy and we need more time. Look for it in the middle of September. Anyway, we should all be aware the new Kenshin anime is already in a weird spot, and so far there's only 8 episodes at the time of me writing this, but we were in the same situation when we looked at the new Trigun, so I think it's gonna be fine. And to look at where this anime is going to fall on the faithful side, we thankfully have two solid sources. We have the original manga and the original anime, which are both beloved in their own ways. However, it's kind of difficult to compare the two anime now, because most streaming services took the original original down when the new one came out. And let's not kid ourselves, that is messed up. We should be able to watch the original if we want to. Blatant scum move. That said, I have a totally legit copy of the entire original anime, so we are good for the purposes of this video, winkity wink. So the OG anime was produced by Studio Gallup, and if you're scratching your head at that name, don't worry, I was too. It turns out that they're most famous for putting out Initial D and basically every single Yu-Gi-Oh series, and that's about it. They've, of course, made other anime, but I've never heard of any of them. And I would say that Kenshin was likely their first hit, even though they had started, I believe, in the 80s. And it was definitely their first hit in the West, right? Well, actually, that's not true. That would be Yu-Gi-Oh, which dropped in 2001. Kenshin didn't hit Toonami until 2003, which is kind of wild to think about. I could have sworn it came out way earlier than that. But anyway, the new anime is being handled by Leiden Films, or Leiden Films, or Liden Films. 
I had also never heard of this studio, but when I looked into their releases, the first thing I recognized was Terraformers and Berserk 2016. Yeah. But that said, in the past couple years, they seem to have redeemed themselves, especially with their production of Tokyo Revengers, which is something that someone tells me to watch almost every day. I will get to it. Blighted Films will also be handling Goblin Slayer Season 2, which I'm extremely hyped about, so hopefully, you know, they're, they're gonna do a good job. But the original Kenshin anime holds a special place in the hearts of many, including myself. But let me ask you, okay, when was the last time you read the manga, and when was the last time you watched the original Kenshin? Recently, I've had to reread the manga like 80 times to work on this big ass Kenshin video coming out, and I know it pretty well at this point. And at the same time, I was watching the original anime run, and I gotta say, it didn't hold up as well as I thought it would, especially compared to the source material. It is isn't bad per se, but it's bad. Know what I mean? If anything truly holds up, it's the OP, Freckles, and that will forever be a bop and it is the first thing I think about when the OG anime comes into my head, but I digress. If we simply look at the first chapter of the manga and the first episode of the original anime, we can already see some, let's say, artistic liberties. A lot of them. In the manga, the first chapter revolves around Kenshin arriving in Tokyo as a wandering swordsman and getting accused of murder by Kaoru who thinks he's but told Side the Manslayer, he is, uh, but not the one that's been running around town actually killing people. Kenshin rescues Kaoru from this man when she tries to take him on alone, and then returns her to her dojo, which has been abandoned by its students, mostly because the fake Batosai has been telling people that he comes from the Kamiyakushi Ryu school, which is the one that Kaoru manages since her father died at the end of the Boshin War. She is being taken care of by an older man she helped once named Kihei. The man thinks it's best for Kaoru to sell her property and live the good life, but she's not down with that. Kenshin warns her not to try and fight Hirokiri Batosai as he's sure her father wouldn't want his daughter to trade her life simply for his sword style. After Kenshin leaves, Kihei tells Karu not to trust the Roroni. There's some goofing off in the city the next day, but later Kenshin goes to the supposed base of the fake Hitokiri Butosai to confront him, but unfortunately the man is already at the Kamiyakashin Ryu Dojo. It's revealed that he's Kihei's brother, Gohei, and this whole debacle has been a big scam in order to force Karu to sign away her property. Kenshin shows up, kicks all the ass, and reveals that he is actually the real Hitokiri Butosai. Kaoru says she doesn't care and invites him to stay, cementing their friendship. Now the original anime is a little different. Instead of Kihei, Kaoru's wounds are being patched up by Dr. Gensai, a legit character from the manga who we meet later. He's also accompanied by his obnoxious granddaughters, and if you've seen Kung Pao, they are the literal embodiment of, we're children, we're children. So yeah, no Kihei at all, actually. Instead, we get really annoying kids, probably put in to uh, emphasize the fact that Kenshin is nice, but because of the missing character, the plot has been totally changed. In the anime, Gohei, who is pretending to be the Batosai, used to be a student of the Kamiyakashin Ryu. He's a violent man, so Karu's dad messed up his thumb and expelled him, and now he wants revenge. He tries to get it, but Kenshin beats him and his goons up and saves Karu. And that's not the, the, the most egregious thing in the world, and this is something we saw a lot with old anime adaptations of shonen manga. I'm not exactly sure if it was done in order to appeal to kids or something, but there were generally a lot of minor changes that dumbed down the plot or completely removed characters or added ones in that were unnecessary, and that's a shame because Kihei and Gohei would go on to be comedic relief characters here and there in the manga for a long time. They even show up hundreds of chapters later when the reader has completely forgot about them. And I also think it's important to know, or at least for me to remind people, that the entire original anime was never aired on TV. It was only the first 62 episodes, which, if that's all you watched, would make you assume that the entire anime is pretty good. But there's actually 95 episodes, and the only way anybody saw the rest was either through the DVD release or by streaming the entire series within, you know, the last 10 years or so that it's been on Funimation. And there's some solid reasoning for this, and that's because the original anime was never finished. And once again, we see this a lot. There's been some especially bad instances of this, like the original Full Metal Alchemist, where the whole everything is different because the manga wasn't finished and the creators were doing a lot of meth. My source is that I made it the frank up. 
I'm speculating that last part. My source is that I made it the frank up. But there's also been issues, particularly in Naruto and Bleach, where the demand for the show was constant and therefore constantly outpacing the manga. This resulted in literally hundreds of non-canon filler episodes that people endlessly complain about to this day. Now, the 62 episodes of Kenshin we saw when it aired on Toonami didn't have either of those problems. However, you'd know if you'd watched all 95 episodes of it, but after the Shishi arc, the anime was given to another studio, and the final 37 episodes were just made up. And they're pretty bad. By episode 88, Kenshin is fighting some like European knight who's on a horse with like a lance in a volcano. The shark was jumped and the anime ended. This means that the entire Jinchu arc was never made, leaving the original Kenshin anime incomplete. Now the backstory arc was animated in a series of OVAs and remains one of my favorite Kenshin adaptations to this day, but for as much shit as the Jinchu arc gets, I th like it a lot and would have loved to see it done. But while the original anime gets pretty bad and adds in obnoxious characters that don't need to be there, it's still a classic and as far as visuals go, it totally nailed the Kenshin aesthetic. The animation itself wasn't always top notch, but as far as the look of the characters, it was very on point. And really Freckles, I mean, it is right there with Smile Bomb as one of the best anime OPs of all time, seriously. But what about the new anime, right? Let's just say... It's different. It opens with this iconic shot from later in the series where Kenshin is squaring up with Saito Hajime of the Shinsengumi during the Bakumatsu in Kyoto. And then the OP comes in and I get sad, okay? The animation is rad, but the music is not. It's like this weird rock pop rap and it's pretty balls. Super modern, not my jam. Makes me wonder if this is just trying to appeal to a new generation, which pff, good luck with that. Most of those kids have written off the series due to its controversy, at least in the West. We'll We'll get to that. I should note that the most significant difference is the animation. Obviously that's going to be a change. We have rectangle TVs now, believe it or not, so the 4x3 aspect ratio is a thing of the past. Kenshin is now in glorious 16x9 1080p. And one of the things that really stands out are the colors, they're great, uh, but Kenshin himself seems a little off. There's just something about him physically that seems really different from the manga and original anime. He looks more masculine or something. Kenshin was designed specifically to be feminine looking, and I'm not sure exactly what they changed, but I think it's his neck. And I know that's a little weird, but his neck seems thicker in the new show, and it somehow makes him look uh, significantly more like a man. But honestly, that's not the end of the world. And while I was doing a little bit of research for this video, it's also not the first time uh, this has been done. I I mentioned earlier Veroni Kenshin Restoration, uh, which was the remake manga released in 2012. This was a two-volume series by Watsuki that was created to drum up interest in the series for younger people, and the Kenshin in this version of the manga and the Kenshin in the new show are almost one-to-one, -one. and this seems to be the way Watsuki wants him to look now, so it's what we get. It's nothing too crazy, but you know, it's different. But besides that very specific change and the new OP being kind of cringe, all that's left is to look at the the new show for what it is, and that is a fantastic retelling of the manga. The voice acting and animation are great. I recognize Kaoru's voice actor immediately as Rie Takahashi, the woman who does Amelia's voice in ReZero. But yeah, I mean, everything is here. It's almost perfectly in sync with the manga. No annoying kids added in. All the characters, even minor ones, make their appearances where and when they should. They haven't skipped anything. It is surprisingly exceptional. The only difference seems to be the occasional flashback to Kenshin and Saito, but that's a cool visual way of explaining the past and is completely unoffensive. They aren't shying away from the politics or the complexities of the story, nor the violence or adult themes. It's really good, uh, great even. And it's also somehow keeping to the same clip as the original anime, with episode 8 ending on the introduction of the fire-breathing Onimitsu. Most of the episodes are even directly named after the manga chapter. And this is truly the adaptation that Ruru Ken deserves. It's honestly really exciting, and if it continues to go on, we could finally see the entire series in animated form from beginning to end the way the manga told it. There's just one teensy problem. Will the new anime continue? That's the problem. As of right now, the earliest episodes have been dubbed in Spanish Portuguese, and uh, this one, I don't know, if you recognize this, let me know what it is. It's not Chinese or Korean, but yeah, uh, no English. 
and if you know how anime works, this should be concerning. Not to disregard the Spanish and Brazilian Portuguese, I mean between Mexico and Brazil, Japan is making those buco bucos, but they just don't have the population of the English speaking world. While it's difficult for a lot of us more hardcore anime enthusiasts to believe, the vast majority of viewers stick to dubs only, and without one, Kenshin will likely have trouble continuing on. If you look deep enough, the anime that do the best are the ones that become popular in the West, namely the US, Canada, and the UK, which all natively speak English. The French and South Central American countries have kept some anime afloat, but Kenshin doesn't even have a French dub, and there's not even an announcement uh, for a future English version. My guess is that the reason for this is the controversy. Again, link in the description for that. The Western world is currently caught up in a shitstorm of social politics that have cowed the Japanese for kind of a long time now, but particularly the last 10 years. And this has caused quite a bit of censorship, looking at you, Fire Emblem, or in some cases, straight up no Western release. I had to buy DOA Extreme Beach Volleyball 3 from China. And despite the vast differences uh, in ideology between the Western left and right, the one thing everyone vehemently agrees on is that what Nobuhiro Watsuki got in trouble for is the root of all evil. And while the controversy isn't and wasn't front page news, especially in the West, the internet is highly aware of it. Social justice warriors and Bible thumpers alike are not going to support this series, despite the fact that if you have Crunchyroll Funimation or a Shonen Jump subscription, you already are. But even if you talk about it on X, someone is going to crawl up your butt. That said, we won't see it because we left the app. Find us on Threads or Blue Sky. Holler. But despite tangentially financing the show, if the West isn't watching, it will be difficult uh, to get greenlit for C Season two. We saw this with Doro Hedoro, it's been almost four years with absolutely no word about season two, and the first season of that got a dub, so I don't know, go figure. Japan loves and will always love Kenshin, but that may not generate enough interest or income to continue this series, which may leave us with another dead anime that could have been. And that's a shame. Uh, but I'm not here to tell you to watch it, uh, just to look it over for a comparison. And not only is this still Kenshin but it's more Kenshin than the original. I'd love to see more series get this kind of love and respect. Just get better OPs for fuck's sake.